Good evening. Thank you. Uh, we will go ahead and get our, our program started. And I'd like to first of all thank you all for making the time to come out tonight to our final public engagement uh, forum. Uh, I generally start these sessions out by uh, acknowledging members of the committee. Uh, we have a few that are en route, so maybe I'll save that until later. So uh, just a quick overview of tonight's forum. I will provide a few uh, brief opening remarks. Uh, we want to cover a little bit of the public forum purpose, and then we'll hear from the executive committee as well as the human resources uh, work group. We'll then talk briefly about ground rules for uh, public discussion. We'll open it up for questions and answers and we'll conclude. We uh, have always started these sessions out by talking about how grand an opportunity this is for Cuyahoga County, that this is truly one of the grandest civic education projects of our lifetime. Maybe we should close that door. Um, so the purpose of tonight's program is simple. Uh, we want to do three things. We want to uh, educate the community on the status of the county transition process. We want to entertain uh, any questions and comments that the public may have as it pertains to the overall process. And then we want the public to be assured that we will take back any recommendations or suggestions or information to, uh, at this point, the executive committee and the uh, transition advisory group for final vetting and uh, they will, of course, turn over the recommendations to the new council and executive. Uh, this slide shows uh, the number of uh, forums that took place over the last several months. Uh, we opened up May 12th in, uh, at the Tri-C West uh, location, and we're wrapping up here tonight uh, at the Stokes Library. Uh, we also had some specialty um, forums that took place in uh, some neighborhoods uh, working with the African American and Hispanic community, as you can see. So we feel pretty good about um, reaching uh, as many corners of the county as, as we could. And uh, at this point, I think we can move into uh, the actual presentation. Um, Jim McCafferty, county executive, county administrator, I should say, uh, will come up on behalf of the executive committee. And we'll need uh, his PowerPoint loaded if that's possible. And he'll give us an update on the executive committee and all the wonderful things uh, that that group has been working on to date. So remember, there's many people at home watching this, Jim, so. <laughs> all right. Well, good evening. Um, this is a report out on the activity of the uh, executive committee to date. And I think that when you talk about the executive committee, we have to go back to a timeline of this transition. Last November, November 3rd to be exact, 2009, the voters of Cuyahoga County overwhelmingly voted to establish a charter. Um, what most individuals don't realize is that this charter actually began on January 1st of 2010, not January 1st of 2011. What happens on January 1st of 2011 is that the charter becomes fully effective. And what really happens that day is a replacement of elected officials by appointed officials by a county executive, 11-member 11 11 council, and then the um, replacement of what we call the row office um, elected officials thereafter. In November of 2009, November 19th, the Board of Commissioners, as instructed by the Charter, appointed a three-member transition advisory group. The Charter actually called for the commissioners to appoint a three-member uh, group of high-ranking county officials to oversee the seamless transition of county government no later than March of 2010. The commissioners felt it was important that we got up and running with the charter as soon as possible and actually appointed myself, Gary Holland, and Joe Nani on November 19th of 2009. Throughout November, we began to meet with interested individuals, interested parties who were interested in seeing the transition go forward. Um, a big group in that was New Cahaga Now, which was what the charters, um, issue six charter group transformed into New Cahaga Now. We began a series of meetings with them to talk about how we would see this transition going. And as the members of the TAG and folks from New Cahaga Now sat down to talk about it, it became apparent this could happen in a couple ways. We could have parallel processes going on where New Cahaga Now 
move forward on a, a transition plan and the transition advisory group from the county move forward on a transition plan and then we would bring those two things together later in the year another option was how they did it in allegheny county which is each of the individuals running for county executive had their own transition plan and the plan they received was the the plan of the winner of the executive committee we thought that made neither of those made very little sense and endeavored to join forces so that there would be one transition plan to move the county forward and hopefully move it seamlessly through the transition period from the old 200 year old government to the new government. So effectively, Cahaganau, New Cahaganau and Transition Advisory Group joined together with other individuals from the community, other entities to create the process that we now have with an executive transition executive committee. In uh, January 2008, um, January 28, 2010 rather, the first executive committee meeting was held, followed by a meeting with all of the work group co-chairs at which goals, organizational chart, proposed roles and responsibilities were shared and discussed. That was the beginning of the actual on the ground work of this transition process. It's important to note that the transition executive committee is outside the bounds of the existing government and the work groups that are doing the actual work of transitioning the government are outside the bounds of the TAG and the actual existing government. They are citizens coming together in a public way to talk about and think about better ways for Cahaga County government to move forward. There were also two ways to do that process. One would be just to do enough to hand the new government the keys, tell them where the light switches were, and let them figure it out. The other option was to really sit down and look at the depth and breadth of Cuyahoga County government, look at everything we do, why we do it, how we do it, and how we fund it, and figure out if in 2011 moving forward, it made sense to continue to do things that way. There were other areas such as human resources, which would be up after myself, where the charter called for a human resources commission, so how we do business in that area will be different by legislation. It also legislated the removal of the auditor, treasurer, recorder, um, the financial part of the uh, clerk of court's duties into a fiscal officer, so there would have to be a new structure there, a new way of doing business. But for much of the county, business would continue pretty much the way it had before the old form of government. So we decided to take this opportunity to really review what we do, again, how we do it, why we do it, and how we pay for it, and to move that work forward. The work group's meetings began, and to this point in time, we have had 330 public meetings of the work groups working on the transition of Cuyahoga County government. These meetings have been on the east side, the west side, in the inner city, on the south side, just about anywhere people are willing to get together, we've had meetings and we've come together. On July 14, 2010 at Tri-C East Corporate College, we had our first uh, tag-sponsored candidate session. 74 executive and council candidates attended that um, forum, which they learned a bit about the county budget, they learned a bit about the process that we're pursuing in this transition, and they got to know some of the players. Some other important dates, we just had the primary election um, this past September 7th. There's now approximately 41 candidates for both exec and council that remain. The work group recommendations are coming to the executive committee for vetting. We've already reviewed the code of ethics group, boards and commissions, procurement and public works, council planning. This coming Thursday morning, September 16th, and Saturday morning, September 25th, both at 7.30 a.m., running till about one, we will review the rest of the recommendations from the other work groups. Human resources, information technology, finance, health and human services, justice services, economic development, human capital quality of places, and government collaboration. We will also be having a second candidate information session or forum on September 21st. I believe that's at Rocky River Auditorium, and that will begin at 8.30 in the morning and run till 11.30 noonish um, at that point in time. It is the belief of the TAG that sometime in early October, we will re receive the recommendations that have been vetted by the executive committee through the work groups. They'll come to us for formal formalization and presentation to the new government, which takes over the day after the general election, November 3rd. 
Um, they actually won't be in office till January 1st, but they will have been elected on November 3rd and we'll begin a lot of work with them at that point in time. Um, what we've done is kind of thought about a process of uh, county government 101, if you will. I think the um, more official title is the new elected official in service on Cuyahoga County government. But what we want to do from November 3rd, dependent upon the availability of the elected officials through the end of December, is sit down in great depth with the elected officials, the newly elected government, go through the county budget in detail, which will be passed on Halloween this year. We will go through all the executive committee vetted recommendations that come to the tag for discussion. We'll have in-depth discussion of county departments and agencies, services they provide, how we do it, why we do it. We'll go through recommendations for change and basically go through Medical Mark Convention Center, Gateway, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, there are 15, 20 of these assorted extra um, things that we do in county government that wouldn't fall under any department or agency that we'll spend time bringing them up to speed on in November, December, because as they go into their new job, they're gonna have to be vetted and understand these things. Then January 2011, the elected officials will be sworn in, and decisions on immediate recommendations made by the executive and or council will follow. Again, we go back to our county transition team objectives, Recommend efficiencies in county government will lead to reductions in total county government general fund expenditures of 15%, in addition to the 15, 11% reductions that were implemented in 2009 by the existing government. Identify and invest 50 million per year, realize savings from above actions into significant job creation and economic growth in Cuyahoga County. Shift a greater percentage of overall expenditures in the balance of savings from above towards direct services to communities and taxpayers. And then last, recommend enhanced capacities, streamlined structures, and operational procedures necessary for the effective functioning of county government by January 1st, 2011. I will also point out to you that those goals must occur in light of the real world. There are things going on today in Cauga County that may preclude $50 million being handed over at the beginning of this process, but I think as we look at the recommendations made we begin to operationalize those. We begin to think differently in some areas. There are gonna be significant savings and efficiencies that we can garner. Whether you'll see those savings in the first year or not are dependent on many factors. For example, to really make the fiscal area work better, I know one of the recommendations that came from procurement that I think will also be coming from finance is for an enterprise fiscal system for all the different facets of county government whether you're um, doing building maintenance and operation, you're doing purchasing, you're doing contracts, you're just doing overall budgeting and, and fiscal work, we need one system, one IT system that fits all those. Human resources will be able to plug into that as well. It's gonna cost money to build that type of enterprise system. That will be money that will save money down the road, may not be available in that first year to save money, but will be coming. We refer to the organizational chart that's up behind me. You know, at the top of the heap, and I think sometimes we all forget this, are the citizens of Cuyahoga County. Any government that we have, no matter what the structure is, exists because of the citizens of the county, and it exists to serve the citizens of the county. Fortunately, occasionally, some of us in public life forget that, but that's really why we're here. Underneath that is the County Transition Advisory Group, which was actually the mandated group by charter to do the seamless trans, um, transition, if you will. And again, um, Gary Howland and Joe Nani are extremely bright men, but the idea that the three of us could have done this alone is, is ludicrous. There's absolutely no way in God's green earth that three guys or even three women could have sat down by themselves and done this transition. Um, the only way to get it done was to reach out to the citizens of the county, individuals in the county with a vested interest and say, sit with us and think differently about how we do this. Another important thing that we did was create the Transition Executive Committee. You know, and there was a lot of debate about who should be on this committee and why they should be there and what they're supposed to do. And I think we came up with um, six excellent individuals and myself as well. I'm there by uh, default, I suppose. But you know, the men and women that we came up with are representative of our community. They are what I guess you call movers and shakers. They're people who bring resources to the table they're people who can hold others accountable because the reality is when all the work 
of the transition is done and these recommendations are packaged and they're moved on to the new government, there is no stipulation in law that the recommendations have to be implemented in any way, shape, or form. I think they're all very good. If I'm a part of that government, I'm gonna recommend highly that they are implemented, but I think this transition executive committee, Frank Jackson, Jerry Sue Thornton, Randy McShepard, Marty Zanotti, Jose Feliciano, Tom Zenti, Sandy Cutler, are men and women in the community that demand respect and they can hold the new government accountable for at least explaining what they do with these recommendations, why they've implemented some, and if they're not implementing others, why not, and what the thought process is. And I think the, the, you'll see in a few minutes, the thousand citizens in this county give up of their time to work on these recommendations deserve no less than a thorough vetting of the work that they've done. If you go down, you'll see two large boxes under the executive committee county government collaboration and public engagement. While those are actually functions of this transition process, they're probably the two most important functions. Um, I think we've been able to reach out to the community through this process in a way the county government hasn't done in a very long time, involve them to the extent people wanna be involved, provided information to the public about what's going on, how decisions are being made and why. And the go government collaboration is looking at the fact that government has to think differently especially in this region where we're under such economic hardship and duress. If we don't think differently as governments about how to get the work we have to do done, we're really not gonna move this community forward. Then underneath that, we have 10 work groups that are really looking at the day-to-day -day activities of county government, boards and commissions. The commissioners appoint or sit on 74 separate boards and commissions. County council planning, how do we run this government once it comes in? Economic development speaks for itself finance and administration. Once you collapse all of those separately elected officials into one fiscal area, how do you ensure that there are checks and balances and a streamlined operation that goes on in the fiscal services of the county? That's what finance administration is working with. Human capital and quality of places. You know, economic development is looking at what I call big E economic development. How do we bring jobs to this region? How do we bring companies back here? How do we keep companies here? But I also think there's an economic piece that we owe our other citizens. And I was doing a budget presentation for the Mental Health uh, Advisory Coalition this afternoon. We were talking about unemployment in Cuyahoga County. And if you look at the official state record, Cuyahoga County has a 9.5% unemployment rate. Well, maybe in the suburbs that's true. But if you live in Huff or Glenville or Central or the near west side, you're looking at over a 40% unemployment. They're no longer counted because some of those men and women have given up, quit looking for work, aren't even trying anymore. And I think any government that wants to raise the boats in the county needs to raise all the boats with it. What we endeavored to do in human capital and quality of places is to make sure that we do that. We look at the breadth that everyone is included in this process, that all of our citizens get a chance, that if there are jobs to be had, we look at an opportunity for everyone to go back to work or to get the services that they need so that they can go back to work and support their families and have a good place to live. Human resources, they're on after I am. The charter calls for a human resources commission and that the county do hiring differently. Human services, one of the core responsibilities of the county. Information technology, probably one of the places we spend the most money in the county. Justice services, another large area of county expenditure and responsibility. And finally, procurement and public works. How do we purchase what we purchase? How is it equitable? And what are the processes we should follow to continue those that uh, purchasing and that payment? Again, I was talking about these work groups. We've had over 1,081 volunteers to work on the work groups. We've asked, also asked another, it says 50 to 100 here, it's more like 150 to 200 county employees who have specific content knowledge to join the work groups and be a part of that. The work group leaders, we've actually asked a county person, county staff, and a non-county staff to co-chair those groups with the idea that nothing's off the table, there are no bad ideas, that every good idea that comes forward so that this would truly be a public-private partnership that we look at these areas in unison, we think differently about them, we look for the best possible ways, the best practices to move our county forward. The executive committee, again, GUIDE leads the process to achieve transformational realignment, realize efficiencies, 
in government and county government, ensure inclusion of the entire community in the transition process. Again, going back to that concept that nobody gets left out or left behind. Recommend seek support for technical assistance, consulting in strategic areas, um, oversee the work groups, ensuring adherence to timelines for work and written recommendations. You know, it's kind of interesting that all of the work groups got their recommendations in on time. And it was a her, her, herculean, easy for me to say, it was a big task. <laughs> I won't even try and go after the word I was going for. It was a huge task to get that done. But we actually got it done on time. We're in the process of vetting those recommendations and we will have them ready for the new government. Review and approve work group recommendations. Without them, make sure they make sense, that there aren't any recommendations that are just coming out of left field that just aren't feasible or realistic in 2011. Forward those recommendations to the transition advisory group for review, approval, and submission to the newly elected county executive and council by November 2010. Now I can tell you, I've met with Gary and Joe. We are not going to change any recommendation that comes to us from the executive committee. We will not change a word of those. If we have concerns and we think there's information left out or thinking that wasn't done, we may add to them. We might write a dissenting opinion. We might add information for the government to think about. But the actual recommendations that come through this process will go to the new government as they were written by the work groups and approved by the executive committee in the public process. We're not going to change a word of the work done. Again, we may add to it because we think there's going to be relevant information that needs to be provided, but we will not change a word of the work done by our citizens. And then the transition advisory group is responsible for developing recommendations for the orderly and efficient transition to the operations of the county government. Um, again, a lot of words and a big duty, one that we carried out through working with the executive committee and the work groups. Um, again, I went through the functional areas that we looked at. What we attempted to do was to sit down and look at all the functions that county government does and then align those into functional working areas for people to look at. It wasn't 100% straight because there's just too many things that we do, but we really wanted to use this year, this 13 month period as a real good opportunity to review everything we do. Really take a look at it. You know, and maybe we've done this for 150 years because back in the 1800s, a legislator thought it's something we ought to be doing. You know what? In 2011, maybe it's something county government shouldn't be doing anymore. What an opportunity for us to move forward. Also through that came things that we may need changed on the state level. For example, an example the design build idea of building buildings and roads. It happens in the private sector. Right now it's against the law in the public sector, but it has an opportunity to save taxpayers a lot of money, speed up projects, get them done more efficiently and more effectively. And it's something that may come out of this process as a recommendation in Columbus for legislative action to make changes. Many of the work groups created subgroups because their, their area was so large. Finance is a perfect example. There are a lot of sub work groups in finance because there are a lot of different specific things they had to look at. All of those recommendations will come forward and be put up. Um, there's some related wor um, work groups. I've talked about public engagement government collaboration. We also have campaign finance reform and code of ethics. Uh, code of ethics is actually a code of ethics that's been written and has been presented to transition executive committee for submission to the new government to be put into law in Cauga County by the council at one of its first meetings. We'll also tell you the procurement um, committee has also come up with a pro procurement code of ethics specific to uh, code of ethics when you're purchasing goods and services for a governmental entity. Uh, campaign finance reform, our recommendations coming to the new government on how campaigning should be done and financed within Cahaga County. Final thing I want to talk about is financial support uh, for the transition. In um, this year's budget, we asked for a little bit over $7 million to be set aside for the transition process. Um, a lot of that money went to pay for the primary election that was um, September 7th, a little bit over $3 million paid for that election. Some of the other costs will be um, offices for the county council. Uh, we're looking at using existing county offices, possibly two council members to an office, transforming those, making sure desks, computers, phone, all of that stuff is in place. You're all probably aware we've also talked about a chambers and we had quite a lively public debate. Um, and I also went over and debated with the editorial board 
of the point you were about the need for a chambers or not. Um, and I think it was overwhelmingly my recommendation, and I think Gary and Joe agreed with it, that the county council needed its own home base as it began its life as a body. That while they should be on the road on a regular basis, they should go around this community and meet. They did need to have their own home base to move to meet out of. We'd already put money aside for a public auditorium, for an auditorium um, renovation in the Justice Center. But we thought it would be disingenuous to this council to have them spend the entire first year on the road. We felt it was that important. They need to have an identity. They need to be different than a city council. So that therefore, they needed a home base to begin with. Not that they don't go on the road and have meetings, but that they have a home base to start out from. So we put about just over $600,000 aside for the renovation of that space. Um, and the rest of the money, if we find no good uses for it, will be put back into the general fund of the, the county government. And again, support has come from the Board of Commissioners, but it's also come from the Greater Cleveland Partnership Foundation, the Foundation Community of Greater Cleveland, and the Business Community of Greater Cleveland to support this work. In closing, I want, want to point out that I think the real idea behind the Transition Executive Committee and the work group process was to do this transition in a way that was a true public-private partnership. It was not the government itself transitioning, but it was the people helping to transition the government. But with a realistic understanding that you needed content experts in meetings that understood how the government worked, understood how funding streams worked, understood how decisions were made, how processes worked, so the people that were making decisions had a firm basis to make those decisions on, understood the mandates and the laws that the government presently works under, but then could think outside of the box and come up with better and different ways to do the work that we do. It's been a great year. I think our first, and I know it might have been on an earlier slide, I think the first forum was February 17th at Levin College in the auditorium. Uh, Randy and I were there. We had a little more turnout than this, but I guess, you know, the summer wears you down. Um, and it's been an interesting process. I think it's been an extremely valuable process. And I believe we're at the precipice of having a set of excellent recommendations to turn over to the new government so that they can make some excellent, good decisions on how to move forward with this government. And with that, I think it's the end of my presentation. Randy, are we going to take questions now or wait no, till the end of both presentations? OK, thank you. While uh, my most capable assistant uh, makes the transition to the next, um, actually, human resources, you can bring them up. Uh, I did want to make a couple of quick announcements. I promised at the very beginning to acknowledge those that are in the room that are part of the Public Engagement Committee that weren't here uh, at the very beginning. Uh, my co-chair, Mary Denahan from Cuyahoga County, if you'd wave, and I see Lorna Wisham, I see Dennis Anderson, uh, Debbie Dowd is sitting right up front, and I think, is that Bill Tarter in the back? Yes. So uh, thank you all for uh, being here and for all your help. Um, I also wanted to make a uh, mention since uh, Mr. McCafferty uh, talked about the February 17th being a bit of a larger crowd that uh, my co-chair reminded me that for several of these sessions, although we haven't necessarily had packed houses in the audience, we've had 250 to 300 uh, web hits uh, where people are actually going and watching these. So although people aren't necessarily coming to the physical place, obviously, I promise you my mom hasn't watched that much. There's a. Uh, <laughs> other people in Cuyahoga County that are paying attention to this. So I think that's worth noting. Um, at this time, I would like to invite uh, Tom, help me, is it Helfrich? Oh, Helfrich, okay. Uh, Tom Helfrich is uh, the Chief Human Resources Officer for Key Corp. And uh, Debbie Southerington is the Human Resources Director for Cuyahoga County. Uh, you heard uh, Jim talk about the fact that we've had private sector and county leadership. And I think uh, these two have done a yeoman's job uh, with a very, very challenging topic when you talk about human resources and all the uh, changes and the, the recommendations and even what the charter called for, I think uh, they, along with their colleagues on their committee, have done a fantastic job. So I'd like to bring them up now to uh, share their uh, work with us. And I would leave the option to you if you want to either stand at the podium or sit at the uh, table, uh, whatever works best. You're welcome. Yeah. I, I can click if you'd like. 
I don't mind. Thank you, Randy. As Randy pointed out, my name is Debbie Sutherington. I am the Director of Human Resources with Cuyahoga County. And with is the microphone on? I'm sorry. I don't it, know. Can, is can it on? Hear? Okay. A little closer. closer. Yeah, pull it closer to you. There you go. Okay. Better? Yep. Okay. So for those who didn't hear, my name is Debbie Sutherington, and I am the Director of Human Resources for Cuyahoga County. And Tom Halfridge and I are here today to update you on the work that the HR Transition Committee did over the last several months, I guess since February, and give you a preliminary look at the recommendations that will be presented to the Executive Committee this Thursday, as Jim and, our, and Randy pointed out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here, and, and as you can see on the screen, yeah, thanks Randy. <laughs> Um, we had a set of charges that we were given and, uh, that came directly out of the charter. The HR um, section of the charter is Article 9. Uh, the charges that we were charged with in this committee were to look at our current operations to determine whether or not we were administering them uh, and identify best practices and redundancies. We want to define the role of a human resources commission. That is something right now that the HR department under the Board of County Commissioners or anywhere in the county operates with is the HR commission. So that was a big task for us. And we also want to recommend an operational and organizational structure for the human resources department moving forward that ensures several things. And these items um, up here on the screen come right out of the charter. We want to ensure pay equity for comparable positions, standardization of benefits, approval of minimum qualifications, consistent discipline, uh, training in many things, total quality management, employees and job functions, personnel practices. We want consistent administration of performance management system, coordination of recruitment, compliance with ex ethics resolutions, and then any other recommendations related to best practices, HR best practices. As we went through our work group, we decided that we needed to really have some guiding principles to lead us through to uh, some solid recommendations. And the work group came up with five, recomm or five guiding principles. All of our recommendations will ensure transparency and accountability, development of a highly ethical culture, efficiency and consistency in operations, we want to value diversity and attract and retain top talent. So those are the uh, guiding principles that the work group used to form the recommendations. We had an excellent work group. I, I think we had an excellent work group. I think put out a pretty good product. But uh, we had an executive committee that we established in our work group. And I'm not going to read through all the names here. But you can see the folks that we identified from um, all walks of life, really, to serve on our HR committee. Uh, some of them were volunteers off of our volunteer list. We did engage uh, five to seven volunteers, I think, throughout our process to do various tasks. Some of them did research for us. Others, again, served on the executive committee. Uh, so we, have, we had several of them uh, delays on to the public engagement committee. So we, we did engage the, the public in this process as well. And throughout the five or seven months here, we had 19 public meetings. And those are meetings of our large executive committee as well as the subcommittee meetings that I'll get into in a minute. So we had a, an executive committee that really helped guide and, and lead us to where we are today. We couldn't have done it without them. So what we did is, because we had such a large task, we thought, is we put together subcommittees to uh, identify and to look at certain areas that we wanted to make recommendations on. So the biggest one and the most important one, we think, is the Human Resources Commission. Since that is so new to Cuyahoga County, we really um, needed to, to make some strong and solid recommendations around the HR Commission. And what that subcommittee did was, um, they did some, some research, and we'll be making some recommendations on the structure of the commission, the powers, and the duties of the HR commission. We had an organizational design and merger subcommittee. And what the subcommittee did is, is we're going to have a huge task in front of us as we merge what is now other elected official agencies, the auditor, the treasurer, the recorder. Uh, as we merge those employees and the HR staff into one HR department, that's one of our recommendations, there's a lot of, of challenges that are going to come with that. So we'll be making a recommendation on the structure of the Human Resources Department, 
we're going to make recommendations on policies, procedures, and practices that are consistent ac across all county executive agencies. And they did, the subcommittee did a review of the current classification and compensation plan. We had a labor relations subcommittee, and that committee uh, took time to decide really where the labor relations function fit within the new county executive. It wasn't quite clear in the charter. So there'll be a recommendation on that, as well as some long-term labor relations strategy. And then we had a, a human resources efficiency uh, subcommittee, and what that committee did was really try to take a look at the practices that we have right now under the Board of County Commissioners. And we wanted to look at those to ensure that we were, um, you know, doing our, or that we were efficient in our operations and that we were doing things according to best practice. So those are the, um, the subcommittees that we formed from the larger uh, executive committee. And, and I would be remiss by not mentioning my staff, the management staff in the Office of Human Resources also was a big part of our subcommittees and, and they um, lent their expertise throughout that process as well. And uh, I'll pick up now and uh, as we, talk about the, um, the subcommittees, uh, what ended up happening is, as we boiled all that down, um, the recommendations really fell into um, three themes as, as we looked at it. Uh, the first is around this building of organization alignment. And um, what we meant by that was um, it was first to bring um, all of the HR functions together in a single uh, HR organization. And that um, the other thing we spent a lot of time, as, as Debbie mentioned, is um, we spent a lot of time um, talking about the functions and the roles of the Human Resources Department versus that of the, the um, Human Resources Commission. And although there is a need, in our view, for them to work very collaboratively, um, we believe that the roles that each plays uh, are distinct, and so um, we're very clear about that. And then one of the other challenges that we had uh, coming out of the charter was um, how do you staff um, the Human Resource um, uh, Commission? And so we've, one of our recommendations talks about how we organize and then staff that, uh, that commission. Um, second bucket of recommendations uh, talks about fairness and equity, and that is the whole issue about how we merge the uh, employee classification and the comp plans uh, within the county, uh, what do we do about policies and procedures that exist throughout the county, and then uh, really trying to introduce or push a performance management culture uh, as, we move, uh, as we move forward. And then the final uh, themed area was around efficiency and productivity. And we think as we looked at all of the benefit uh, plans, both the design of the plans and the, and the cost of the plans, the premiums, uh, we, we decided that we really wanted to develop a, co a cohesive and a uh, more unified uh, benefit strategy. Similarly, we wanted to have a uh, labor relations strategy, taking a look at the various um, uh, collective bargaining agreements and the bargaining units, and is there a way to do that uh, differently and uh, in a more streamlined fashion? And then finally, the whole issue around HRIS uh, and payroll and how would we tackle that. So those are the themed areas that we had. We decided, uh, as we pulled this all together, that uh, rather than coming with 20 or 30 recommendations, we really wanted to boil it down to a couple handfuls of recommendations that we thought were absolutely um, uh, important and substantive. So that's how we, how we did it. So just um, taking a little bit deeper dive into the, the themed areas that I just talked about, uh, specifically, uh, we believe, and, and I believe um, uh, personally, that the HR department director needs to report directly to the county executive. Um, I think the work that goes on here is critical, and, um, and so we believe that it's really important that the HR director and the HR department uh, report to the county exec. And what we believe also is, if you talk about the role differential, 
the HR department really is uh, responsible for um, human resource, the operations, the policy, and the strategy of human resource work across the entire county. On the other hand, if you talk about the commission, uh, we believe the commission plays a very important role, um, but their role is um, ethics uh, enforcement, uh, it is being in the middle of and handling you know, various employee appeals, um, as well as uh, they have an oversight role. They have an oversight role in terms of as uh, metrics and key, um, um, uh, key, key metrics are established, then they've got the responsibility to make sure there's follow through on that. So we believe there is a, a strategic role from the department and an enforcement and follow through role in terms of the commission. And then the last one in this segment was to, to say what you need to do is to bring all the human resource departments and functions together across the charter affected uh, organizations and bring those together in one single department. Um, and now you've got disparate uh, functions in various parts of, uh, of the organization and bringing those folks together and bringing those functions together, uh, we think is, uh, is, is essential. And then we talk about the final uh, bucket of work and this whole issue of, um, or the second, is uh, fairness and equity. Um, and that is, we've started, but it is the continuing integration of the non-bargaining folks into the current non-bargaining, uh, the BOCC, non-bargaining classification and comp plan. So bring everybody together under one common, uh, common plan. Uh, similarly, um, uh, we believe that you've got to have a common set of policies and practices that you, um, that you follow and the administrative rules. And, and what you want to do is make sure that you apply them as uniformly as possible across all the charter affected uh, agencies. At least uh, to me and to the, it, it seems, to, at least from my standpoint, it makes a lot of sense but uh, as some of us who don't work in this space uh, every day, uh, uh, we recognize how difficult yet how important a task uh, this is. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier about this new performance management system, really is if we're gonna attract and retain really good people, uh, we've got to introduce or be more rigorous about having performance be a key driver uh, in uh, all that we do. Then the final bucket as we talk about drive efficiency and productivity, um, uh, we do believe that we've got to take a step back and have a comprehensive benefit strategy. And what we want to do is make sure that, that there is good benefit coverage uh, for folks. Um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that Benefits are aligned and, and contributions are aligned across all employees. We do think that this will provide very competitive and very good benefits, yet we also believe through efficiency we'll be able to save potentially significant uh, dollars uh, with respect to that. And then finally, um, as we talk about, um, uh, we talk about the uh, labor uh, relations uh, contracts, we have a variety of labor uh, contracts that are coming up uh, and come up over the next several years. And what we believe is that we do need to pull together and um, have a strategy that takes a look at the contracts, the timing of such, that we develop a plan that in fact um, calls for the standardization of benefits and that we then have a game plan to implement the strategy. Uh, the benefits piece and the labor relations piece we recognize are not going to happen on day one, but we do believe they're important enough that it will require a, uh, a good detail plan and our view is we might as well get after it and, um, and get going on that. And then finally, um, the current HRS uh, system, which is um, an SAP system for the Board of County Commissioners, we believe that that ought to be the uh, management system for all the agencies to, uh, to run payroll. And that'll be really critical 
um, in terms of as we, as we hire folks, as we um, obviously pay folks, but as we uh, make sure that we've got more standardization, payroll and the information system is a critical link to make sure that that handle is handled uh, handled in a consistent uh, consistent way. So um, that is um, you know what we have undertaken, and and I would just say in conclusion that uh, those of us who have not worked in this space before um, have gained a, uh, a really a new respect for the work. Uh, that goes on in the county, uh, but specifically on this one for Debbie and her team. Um, uh, you know, tremendous amount of work and really good work that goes on, and also an appreciation of how significant, important, and difficult this task ahead uh, is for the new county executive and the council. So, with that, great. We'll bring well, thank Jim you. back up and. Yeah, if we can have Jim come back up for questions and answers, and we'll uh, convert the PowerPoint one more time. And I'll give the ground rules. Uh, before we do that, I would okay. like to, at this time, ask you to please, please take the time to complete the exit surveys that you should have picked up on the way in. Uh, we are using that information. Please come right ahead. Um, we're using that information to help guide the process overall, and we want to know how effective these public forms have been, and your uh, completing those uh, forms would be very much appreciated. So if you don't have a copy, uh, if you hold your hand up, we can have someone bring you one. But um, it's very basic, just five or six questions and any comments that you may want to uh, share with us. So um, Jim, I think there's a third chair there, and you all can maybe share the mic all right, so these are the uh, ground rules for the Q&A portion of our program. First of all, on both aisles, you'll see there's microphones. And if you would please uh, come to the microphone so that those watching at home or on computer can hear your comments. So they're in, on both sides. We ask you to state your name before commenting. There's a two-minute limit per person. Uh, Everyone, uh, we, we would like everyone to have an opportunity to speak once before we start with the second round of comments or questions. If you are running for office, we would ask that you uh, state that in, in your introduction. Uh, we ask that you focus your comments or your questions on either the executive committee or the human resources work group. We don't want to charge them with having to answer questions about other committees and work groups. And finally, uh, there's a timekeeper. Would that be uh, you, Debbie, or, or Mary? Okay, if you're um, getting close to uh, two minutes, she will hold up a sign or wave at you to let you know that your time is short. She'll wave at you. So uh, with that, uh, we'd like to open up the floor for uh, questions or comments. Oh, I thought Lorna was running to the mic, but uh, <laughs> she ran away from the mic. I'll start us off. Okay, um, great. Mary Denahan from the transition. And Tom, I uh, wanted to ask you a question as a private citizen. And uh, you, you mentioned some of the observations about the task ahead, but um, significantly, what did you learn throughout this process um, about uh, what needs to be done for HR to be, be able to achieve this uh, transition that needs to happen? And what surprised you the most? I was surprised by the complexity, um, and that is um, um, the fact that you had all these agencies, um, there were various policies in various agencies, and so there wasn't the kind of consistency and cohesiveness that I would have uh, expected. Um, also, um, with the fact that uh, it's been so tight on the budget, um, you know, and the fact that there have been virtually no increases, you know, frozen salaries, um, was concerned about the ability to, to bring and keep uh, really good people. And so we think that's a critical part of, uh, of this, and that's why we put this emphasis on performance, uh, performance management. Um, so I, I think those were a couple of the things that I would, uh, would, I would observe. Um, the other thing is, um, although 
there are a lot of policies and procedures that were different, you know, among the various agencies. Um, you know, it, it was very rule-based, and so, um, you know, my view is putting good managers and leaders in place and, and letting, letting them drive some of the necessary changes is important. Um, as long as you have a clear set of standards and policies and practices to follow. Um, and that's why I think we talked also about having this consistent set of policies and a, a payroll system so everything's got to funnel through and you can't end up uh, with one-off deals that, um, that might take place in terms of hiring or promotions and things like that. Good afternoon, Ken Lancy, County Executive Candidate, uh, Independent. The question I have is, is through my travels um, through the county and visiting a number of the agencies, uh, there were several HR departments scattered around. What is the recommendation and what would be the consolidation? How many do you envision as a starting point for the, for the new government? Well, I'll take a first crack and then turn it over to Debbie. Our clear recommendation is to bring all of the human resource functions into a, uh, a new human resources department. So as you went around, is all of that gets brought under the purview of the HR director. Um, and then Debbie can talk about what that means in terms of people, because what we found is you've got tenths of people or people doing this half time and so uh, we've been wrestling with what does that all mean. The more important thing was pulling all of that together so you have this consistency. Yeah, Mr. Lancy, can you hear me? Yes. Um, as Tom said, our recommendation is to consolidate those functions. We have identified somewhere, and I don't have my notes with me, I think probably around 14 people right now who don't work for the HR department under the board who represent the auditor, the recorder, the sheriff, the coroner, and those folks. So it's our intent then to merge those folks into the HR department, the HR structure under the county executive. And what about the sheriff's department? And the sheriff, yes. As well, okay. And developmental disabilities, who has their separate HR, would stay separate? Correct, yes. Okay, great. Yeah, Ken, I would say Metro Health, the Adams Board, Developmental Disabilities Board are all separate entities that will maintain separate HR type functions. Yeah, um, I found that they're doing very well uh, the way they're operating. Yeah, but they, they actually also legally um, are are separate. have a separate board that oversees, uh, oversees their activity. I, I do think they all do fine as well. Now, if they were interested in consolidation working with us, we would certainly be open to it. But from a legal standpoint, they have the ability to be, to be maintained as separate entities. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I don't want you to drive home and wish that you... Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Bill. Uh, good afternoon. William Tarter asking a question as a private citizen as well, uh, also a member of the Public Engagement Subcommittee. Uh, question about the Executive Committee. I heard mentioned before that after the transit, after the election, the executive com committee or perhaps the transition advisor group will be staying together to ensure that some of the recommendations are, are continue to be recommended to the county executive and county council. Uh, I'd like to find out more about that. What is, how is that follow-up going to happen? When is it going to happen? Will there be public forums, any type of, uh, will there be any type of format in terms of making sure that the recommendations are not just submitted to the county executive and county council, but also acted upon, and if not, why not? Thank you. Well, I, I think that's for me to take a shot at. Um, now I, I'm taking my executive committee hat off in my county administrator hat, and I'm now a transition advisory group member. Then okay. um, I guess county administrator too. Beginning as early as November 3rd, 
of 2010, the day after the, the general election, to the extent that the new executive and the council are available, we intend to, to begin an in-service with those individuals. And I, I think they'll be a little bit different. I think council in-service and executive in-service may be a little bit different. Some of it will be got, done together, but um, at least one executive candidate's asked about moving into my office with me. And I, I would say to all of the people running that that's an excellent idea to really immerse yourself in those two months and how it, you know county government works now is a, is a jumping off point. But we, we intend to have a series of um, uh, in-services, if you will, on all kinds of facets of county government and recommendations. And we're gonna invite um, co-chairs and members of the work groups to attend when their recommendations are being put forth. We're gonna invite executive committee members to be there when recommendations are going forward. We're inquiring as to their availability once 2011 comes to continue to work on issues. I mean, the transition isn't gonna magically end at the end of December. This transition is gonna extend for years before we get all of this arranged. We also know that a number of people from the community have other lives too and jobs and things and may seek less involvement, but we're hoping that a number of our private partners will stay involved and continue to work with us as we move on. And I, I would think that the new county executive and council would consider in 2011 a series of ongoing forums like this to report out on the changes in government made um, th through this transition process and what's happening and what's being done. I think we also envisioned in the public engagement committee, whether it be an inside county group now or division or still this public-private partnership, continue to exist as an outreach to the community because it's something we really didn't do that well in the old county government. So I think there's a d number of different prongs that you'll see that involvement on. But I do believe in that um, November, December timeframe, there'll be some pointed questions of people that have been involved in this transition about whether or not they would be able or willing to stay involved as, that tra as the transition continues into 2011 and help with guidance and information. And I guess I'll ask Gary, another m member of the TAG, is that, Gary, you think a fairly accurate representation how we see that going forward. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. This is our last forum for public engagement. And one of the things that I, I'd like to publicly recognize is Randy oh, yeah. and what a terrific job that you have done throughout this process. Randy broke his foot. He never missed a meeting. He was there standing on crutches, and I don't think much pain medication. And I, I really um, want to say it's been an honor to be able to work with you and to the rest of the public engagement group. The, they are a terrific, dedicated group, and we've been really lucky, especially with the private citizens, some of who aren't able to be here today, but Ray and Linda and just a whole host of folks who have helped make this happen, but especially to you, Randy, for playing through the pain. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, I, I could, I, the only way I made it was with your help, Mary. So um, <laughs> back at you, and uh, you've been a, a real joy to work with, and the county is uh, lucky to have you. Um, as we wrap up, um, Please uh, rest assured that we will take this information back for further refinement. Um, Human Resources has yet to present to the Executive Committee, so we'll maybe hear more about that. Um, we would ask you to please, uh, if you haven't already, complete the uh, exit surveys. Uh, Gary, standing in the back, uh, will be happy to take those as you exit. You want to say something else? Yeah, when you're done. Okay. and. Um, you can always visit the charter at CuyahogaCounty.us for the latest information, update, et cetera, and we would encourage you to do that. And uh, just know that uh, your ongoing engagement is critical and has been critical uh, throughout the year. So we uh, will now uh, wrap this up, but Garrett, I'm sorry, Jim wanted to say something uh, before we close. Just as a reminder to folks, whether you're here or at home, this Thursday, September 16th, 7.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m., at the Center for Families and Children, I think it's 4500 Euclid Avenue, um, the Mandel Room, there will be a report out of um, three or four more of our work groups. And then on Saturday, September 25th, 
from 7.30 a.m. in the morning to one o'clock in the afternoon at the Greater Cleveland Partnership, second floor of the old Higby's building on the square. Some of us that are old remember going there to see Santa when we were kids, but now we don't see Santa anymore. Um, but it'll be 7.30 to, and the rest of the report out will be that morning at the um, Greater Cleveland Partnership. And we've actually been getting very good crowds for those report outs um, of individuals coming. So anyone that's interested, there's free parking I think in both places, and um, we really do want you to come. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you all for making the time tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon, maybe at one of those events that Jim just outlined. But uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Thanks. Thanks.